broadcasting live, live and around the world. Around the world. From Cabana One, the only podcast that's all ball bearings. Your ultimate source for everything Fletch. Moon River. Whew. Thank you, Doc. You ever serve time? Laker Jim and his beat reporters will stop at nothing to make sure Fletch lives forever. Forever. <laughs> they don't shower much. Oh. This is Fletchcast. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you. I couldn't wait. Welcome, everyone, to the first episode of Fletchcast. Your ultimate source for everything Fletch. I'm your host, Laker Jim. For those of you who know who I am, it's great to talk to you again. It's been a long time. I used to run a Fletch website. It was called the Fletch One homepage. And it was the ultimate source for everything Fletch, just like this podcast is going to be. It was the one-stop shop for Fletch fans to find news on the new movie, which was Kevin Smith's Fletch One at the time, and communicate with fans just like themselves. I took all my passion for Fletch and I put it into this website because I knew someone just like me was out there looking for everything that I could offer. And that was my motivation. It wasn't money or recognition. It was just a fan showing other fans his love for Fletch in the purest form. And this podcast is going to be an extension of that website, a sequel of sorts, or in today's terms, a remake. If you join us on this journey, along with three guys who love Fletch as much as you do, you're going to learn so much about the movies, the books, the scripts, and news about the upcoming Fletch film that will be released in early 2022. Yes, you heard me right. Let me give you a little background about how I fell in love with Fletch. Give me a little uh, running for love. Harold Fultimar. There we go. I was around 13 years old, which puts the story at 1993. My friend Joe, who was a couple years older, but he was my movie guy. So he he would tell me the movies that he knew I would love. He says to me, hey, you ever seen Fletch? I'd never even heard of it. He says, you never heard of Fletch? You're a diehard Laker fan. It's a movie about Chevy being a diehard Laker fan. It's hysterical. You have to see it. I begged my mom to drive me to the video store. At the time, in our town in New Jersey, it was called Palmer Video. This was long before Blockbuster had taken over. And um, I remember going into the Palmer Video. I asked the video clerk, hey, do you guys have Fletch? And he pointed me to the comedy section. It didn't take me long to find the classic Fletch cover of Chevy holding the IDs with the gun pointed at him. I probably watched it five times over the course of that two-day rental and hundreds of times since. Suddenly, it all made sense. I wanted to be Fletch. I wanted to be like this guy. He was suave and witty and funny and smart and cool and confident. And at the end, he gets the girl. What better outline for a kid, a shy kid, moving on to high school than to be like Fletch? My other friend, Bob, we watch Fletch all the time. (laughs) Okay, enough running for love. Bob and Joe were my two buddies that would just quote movie lines back and forth and back and forth. We didn't even have to say the line right. We could just hum the line and the other person knew what we were talking about. I would imagine everybody listening to this podcast has that friend. If you don't, go out and find one. You need a friend like that in your life who could just speak in movie quotes. Bob is one of those friends who would do anything for you. He'd give you the shirt off his back. He's actually going to be calling into the podcast later on. Um, We actually took what little budget we had left, flew him out to Santa Monica, but we'll be hearing from him later, and he's going to be part of the podcast every week. Now, fast forward a couple of years, and the website is really starting to get some notoriety. We're being written about in magazines. Whenever Fletch is mentioned, our website is mentioned. Fletch One homepage. I was able to interview some of the cast. Now, Contacting a celebrity was not as easy back in 1999 as it is today. There was no Twitter or social media. I had to write letters. I had to find addresses to the stars and write them letters. And surprisingly, a lot of them wrote back. 
we were able to interview Jim Swarthout, William Sanderson, Tim Matheson, even Chevy Chase. And that is when I was really introduced to another Fletch fan. Uh, his name was Jake. Uh, he had, he was always posting. He actually messaged me and said, hey, listen, I, I know Gregory McDonald. And uh, if you send me some interview questions, I think I can interview him for the website. And he did just that. And I, I think if you, if you really scour the internet for interviews on Gregory McDonald, this is it. So I'll use that segue to introduce Jake to the show the same way I would introduce him on the website. And that is, welcome our old pal, Jake. Jake, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Jake, welcome to the podcast. I think we're going to have an amazing crew uh, between Jake and Bob and myself. Uh, Jake, give us a little background of how you went about to meet Gregory McDonald. All right. So I was living in northern Alabama at the time. Um, my history uh, is kind of varied. But at the time, I was working for a television station in northern Alabama. And I was in a used bookstore one day and um, just to pass the time. And I saw the Fletch paperback. But what, what was different was it actually, as you talked about, it had the movie poster cover. So I was like, wait a minute. I mean, because I was a huge fan of the movie. And I was like, wait a minute, there's actually, this is a book? I had no idea. And I noticed in this section, there were several of them. So I picked up the first one and started reading it. And I loved it. And obviously, in, in future episodes, we'll go into the similarities and the differences between the novels uh, and the book uh, or in the movie. And just, you know, we'll go back and forth. Jesus H. Christ. Hold on a second, Jake. Figure out how to answer. Hello, hello, Bob. Is Bob? Is that you? I'm here. I'm. I'm. This is Big Bob. I'm calling in from the Santa Monica Pier. I'm actually on the exact it. same payphone that Fletch used in the movie. I'm almost afraid to ask what is the state of that payphone right now. Greasy. Oh, <laughs> very greasy. Um, and I don't think it's grease. I, I, I don't want to get into what I think it is, but uh, that's the least of my concern. Um. I'm looking around here and, uh, you know, Santa Monica Beach, absolutely beautiful. Uh, however, I fear for my life. <laughs> well, thank you. I we really appreciate your uh, your efforts and your fletchdom. Is this going to uh, take long? Is this going to take long? Just out of curiosity. Not that I, I don't want to contribute. I just I, I want to potentially look into some weapons to defend myself. I think I think you should definitely have some some weapons on you, and I, I think you should have enough change to get you through a, about an hour phone call. Uh, you would think I, I I would have prepared with change. I, I did not. Um, I've been asking people uh, to break uh, a dollar. I'll take any form of of, of, of change. I gave a, 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 a I think he was a homeless man two singles to get me change about twenty minutes ago. I haven't seen him since. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody break a ten? Can anyone break a 10? I'm looking for 40, 40 quarters. I'll settle for 30. <laughs> well, Bob, listen, while you handled that, we're going to get back to Jake's story. Jake, keep going. Keep going. If you remember where you left off. Long story short, I read the book. I loved it. And I happened to be in the newsroom one day at the TV station. And I had mentioned to my assignment editor, hey, I'm reading this Fletch book. I had no idea that it was the book. I thought it was just a movie. And my assignment editor says, you know, the guy, the author lives up in Tennessee. He, he lives not too far from here. So I was like, wow, that's incredible. And he said, you should do a story on him. You, maybe he'll do this. Maybe you'll, uh, you'll be able to interview him. So you were working at a news station. At yeah, the time? I was working at a television station at the time. Um, w A A Y in uh, in Huntsville, Alabama. W A A Y, <laughs> right? W it was Way TV, um, up on the hill on uh, Montesano there in uh, northern Alabama in, in Huntsville. So I said, yeah. So I can't remember. Uh, I th I believe he told me to contact the library uh, because. There was someone working at the library near his house that had direct contact with him. We didn't have actually contact information with that for him. 
So I call the library, I leave this woman a message. I said, hey, you know, I would love to interview Gregory McDonald. I know you know him. Could you please pass on my phone number? So a couple of weeks go by and uh, I go into the station one day and I pick up and I check my voicemail and there's a voicemail from Gregory McDonald there. And I can't remember exactly what it said, but it was like, this is Gregory McDonald. I heard you wanted to interview me. Uh, you can contact me at this phone number. And I remember the last thing he said was, if you give out my phone number, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, I cannot believe he called me. So I called him and he was, you know, he couldn't be nicer on the phone. And, you know, one thing led to another. A few weeks later, we got, go up to his farm in Tennessee. If you're a Gregory McDonald fan, you know that, you know, for a long time he lived in Boston, but he retired, semi-retired, down on a farm in, in Tennessee. So, you know, we went to his farm and he, again, him and his wife were, were so nice and we did the interview and, and you know, we, we became really good friends and uh, we'll talk more about that later. But that's how our relationship started. Right. And, and for those of you who don't know, I mean, I, I assume, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, um, you know, that there, Fletch is not just a movie. It was first a series of books and there were 11 books that Gregory McDonald wrote yeah. that um, included the, the character of Fletch and his adventures. And the, the first movie was based on one of Gregory mcdonald's books and it's pretty true to the book i mean for the most part it's pretty true to the book which is i don't know if that's a common thing when when a when a book is adapted into a movie uh but 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 a lot of the dialogue is the same i listen to the books on audio because i can't i don't have the <laughs> capacity to read a book yeah. on paper but yeah i mean when you hear the lines you kind of get a weird feeling like it's like oh man they they took they took that line right from the book yeah yeah and there's just so much, um, you know, when you're reading the book and then, yeah, you know, you kind of recall the movie in your mind that there's just, there's so much great stuff. And it just goes to show you um, just how talented Gregory McDonald was. And, and yeah, it was, um, it was just, it was just, I was really blessed to know him and, um, and just everything that, that he did. It was just, it was just great. And, you know, now obviously with, with the new movie shooting, um, uh, we're, and I think that kind of sparked us to kind of get back into it, too, is the fact that, you know, Fletch is going to be, you know, reintroduced finally uh, after many, many years of development hell, um, you know, to to the audience again. And so obviously we're super excited about that. Hallelujah. We've certainly carried the load of keeping Fletch alive for the last mm -hmm. 20 something years. I mean, it's time <laughs> that's we get that's a, get exactly a bit right. Well, again, your, your website dedicated the, the, the middle time. It really did. You know, we were so hopeful for Kevin Smith to take the reins and create Fletch One. And when that didn't happen, we, we did kind of all fall into a, a bit of a, a slump, not getting any more Fletch. So this is just so big for yeah. any Fletch fan out there to know that, you know, uh, hope is on the way. Now, don't get us wrong. Chevy Chase is Fletch. Absolutely. But Gregory McDonald is also Fletch. Yeah. And now... John Hamm is Fletch. Yeah. And dare I say there's a little Fletch in all. <laughs> That's, well, like, 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 uh, like Jim said earlier, we all, you know, strive to be like Fletch in our everyday lives. So you're exactly right. Let's take a listen to a little teaser from John Hamm on the Jimmy Fallon show. Hey, did I hear a, a rumor? I heard a rumor about you maybe uh, filming a movie. Uh, are you? Are you yes, I'm filming a movie. <laughs> no, you are. But are you doing? Well, I'll tell you, uh, you can, maybe you can guess what I'm filming. It starts with F. Yes. And it rhymes with Fletch. <laughs> you are doing we're remaking Fletch? Fletch. Yes, we're uh, rebooting Fletch uh, up in Boston. We start uh, Monday, and we're very excited. Greg Matul is directing. Myself, John Slattery, uh, Holy uh, moly. a cast of others uh, will be in it. That's yes. major. Very exciting. That's very genius. exciting. Yes, very very exciting. It's uh, it's it's uh, it's it's very exciting. We we all love the movie growing up. It's a, Dude, it's an perfect. '80s staple, and we're going to sort of reboot it and update it for the for the 2000s. You're perfect. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, we're all very excited as well. Ironically, Jimmy Fallon once considered for the role of Fletch in Fletch One. Now back to what I was talking about. There are those moments, and and it only happens perfectly a handful of times in your life. But when you can deliver a Fletch line to an unsuspecting person, <laughs> could it be any more Fletch than that? And really, that's who this podcast is for. 
the people who will take that fletch line and understand exactly what you're saying. How many times have you delivered a fletch line to somebody in there? No ben, idea. Yeah, Ben Affleck actually was quoted uh, in an interview. Bob, are you juggling something that's making noise? Like change or something? I'm sorry. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'll stop. One of my favorite Ben Affleck quotes, um, Entertainment Weekly asked him what his favorite Chevy Chase film was, and of course he replied, Fletch. Affleck says, Fletch, it's just tremendous. I still quote stuff from it all the time. It's all ball bearings. I always tell people at hotels to put it on the Underhills account. (laughs) Sometimes they actually try to do it, or rarely do they even know what I'm talking about. But when they do, I know I've met a kindred spirit. Sometimes they just walk away, and I'm not sure whose account they put it on. <laughs> That's awesome. I like Ben. Yeah. Ben would have been a good Fletch. In, in retrospect, I think he would have been a good Fletch. Yeah. You know, when I started really getting to Fletch, and this was, like you said, this was like, I think it was like around 2002, 2003. And again, you were right. You know, the internet was in its in its infancy. And um, just when I I would just Google. Well, I don't even think Google wasn't even around. Now. You know, I, right. you know, one of the many probably now defunct search engines that, uh, you know, came and went. God, what was it at the time? Can you remember? I don't remember, but I remember putting like Netscape Navigator <laughs> yeah. or something. So, so I remember putting in Fletch and obviously your website was up uh, and running because, like I said, you, like you said, it was, you know, late 90s. This was like 0203. And I was like, oh, my God, look at this. And then, you know, just doing what you did, I'm like, this guy, this guy knows me. Um, because, you know, after I read the first book, and then obviously when I, when I knew, started knowing Gregory, um, I quickly devoured the other books. And, you know, when I found the, the website, it was just like, like you said, I, I, I've come home. And it was just great, too, because there was always that anticipation, that excitement that Fletch One might get off the ground. And we'll, I guess, talk about this in future episodes. But, you know, there was always that that hope. And every few months there would be, you know, a little piece of information. Oh, you know, Kevin's going to start shooting in the fall. Kevin's got the script ready. And um, so there was always that anticipation, that excitement. And, you know, I would talk to Gregory a lot about it. And he was excited about it, too. And, um, you know, it's a shame that he never really saw it get off the ground before he passed. But, um, you know, I, I'm sure he's very he would be very, very happy. And I know in, in podcasts ahead, we'll hopefully be able to interview some people that knew him very, very well so we can learn even more about him. Gregory might not have lived to see the movies get off the ground, but I was honored that he was able to see my website and see my tribute to his creation. And Uh uh, that really means a lot to me. He wrote me a a funny autograph once that Jake got me, and it said, Two Laker Jim, great website. I check it often to see what I'm up to, (laughs) which I think is hysterical. Um, And that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, we were excited about the Fletch One news, but the days and weeks and months in between the actual news I, I wanted to create news. I wanted to create content that Fletch fans could check out. And I wasn't inventing news. I wasn't creating fake news. But what I was doing was trying to take a different angle on different aspects of an old movie and dig up facts and things that nobody knew about. And in turn, that made them new. I can attest to that. I, I've, I've been there for the ride of James really since I was six years old. And I have seen his tenacity and dedication. James is a bear for detail. <laughs> uh, he mentioned earlier about the movies and how every time you watch them, you discover something new. And it's very true. With his website, I think that, you know, it, it, God, how many years has it been in a state of, I don't want to say a state of disrepair. But it's still there. It, it is frozen in time. Yeah, It's frozen in time. It, it's frozen in but it is still there. I, I encourage everybody to take a ride over to it. Maybe if time permits, James could, could, could use it again and update it again. Uh, not putting extra, extra not putting that, not putting that on us on James, but, but honestly it, it is, it is really worth a visit because you do get a, an idea and a sense of, of how dedicated and how James was at the time and how great the website once was. And, and, and really, 
Please deposit that? 40 cents. 40 cents, please. Wait a minute. I think we might have lost Bob. Yeah, we, we must have lost him. Well, hopefully Bob can get back on. So hopefully Bob can dig up 40 cents to call back in. But while we wait for Bob, let's let's uh, let's talk a little about the social media that we've set up for the Fletch fans. Yeah, uh, it's already up and running. Uh, we've been posting um, and just you know updates of when our first couple episodes will be ready. You know, I have posted some pictures of you know Gregory McDonald of some of our uh, some of the autographs he sent me, my some of the autograph books, and we've streamlined the Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts so you can find us at i am fletchcast that's the letter i m f l e t c h c a s t and um you type us in and that's that's where you'll go to continue to find all the fletch um news and tidbits and fun facts that we've always been putting out as well as the podcast information i encourage you guys to uh, follow it Obviously, we'll be posting news and updates there. The new Confess Fletch director, Greg Matola, is already following us, which is great. And, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get him on a future episode. Uh, he, he said that he would do it, fingers crossed, uh, that we would be able to get that because obviously, I mean, that's huge because, you know, that's our, that's our new director. God, I admire you. That is absolutely incredible that Greg Matola follows us. That is that he's our director. That's our direct. That's our Michael Ritchie right now. So not only will our social media give you guys all the amazing Fletch fun facts that we've done in the past, we have a voice now. Literally and figuratively, we have a voice. So the more you contribute to the social media, the more you'll you'll be able to get your message out in front of the director of Fletch and the people that control Fletch going forward. So that's really an exciting thing, and it's a really big responsibility that we have to help shape the future of Fletch. And that's really why I started this podcast, because like Bob touched on before, news isn't delivered that way, certainly not Fletch news on the website. And as much as I, I, it pains me to let the Fletch site just sit News isn't delivered that way anymore. You know, news is delivered via text message, via news alert, social media, via podcast. So during the pandemic is when I really thought to myself like about the podcast. And unfortunately, I didn't work from home during the COVID pandemic. I went in. I wasn't home one day. I went in to work. And honestly, everything happens for a reason because I set up the Fletch Instagram account, and that is where I re-met Jake. And that's where I re-met a lot of Fletch fans that I, that I had talked to in 20 years. A fan named Jay Stone, who did a lot of fan art for the old website, um, connected with us on, on Instagram. And he actually designed the menu screen that is up on the website right now on the homepage um, that lives there forever. And uh, so I thought it was only fitting that he helped me create the logo for the podcast as well, because he's been such a anonymous contributor to the to the website. And I'll give his I'll give his uh, company a little plug: JSC Network. You can find him on Instagram at JSC Network. His artwork is incredible. He does lots of King of Queens stuff, lots of Fletch stuff. He's really talented. And uh, so I worked with him on creating the logo that I wanted. And uh, we were going back and forth, and I noticed like he wasn't responding right away sometimes. Sometimes he'd be great at responding, sometimes he wouldn't be. He's in England. He's across the pond. So that's how far our community of Fletch fans reaches. And that's something that's so special to me. And you know what, what the most special thing is? like All his time, all his effort. I offered to pay him. He didn't want it. He didn't want it. I love that about our fans. They do it for the love of Fletch. But anyway, in the back of my mind, I always had the idea of a podcast. And it's not till this summer. I kind of tossed it out to Jake just um, in conversation. Um, We had never physically spoke before. Um, Just just, uh, communicated via email and via social media. I just tossed it out to him and I said, hey, what do you think of a podcast? And he was like, amazing idea. And uh, I said to him, like, well, I think I could only do it is if you were you were a co-host on it. 
and we did this together. And from there, the ball just started rolling, and the ideas started flowing, and then I got Bob involved, and it's really, I love the way it's developed already, and we're only on episode one. So the timing of this podcast is perfect. Yeah. This is also a great time to go back and celebrate the old films. And, you know, we say films because we love Fletch. But don't forget Fletch Lives because, yes, it is an original work. We know it's not based on a Gregory McDonald novel, but there is a lot of funny stuff in Fletch Lives as well. Um, and, you know, and, and talk about the treasure trove that is Gregory McDonald and our source material, which is the number of Fletch novels. You have an AT&T collect call from... Guys, it's Big Bob and I'm a change of free... Will you accept charges? <sighs> sure. You will be billed for this collect call. Thank you. Big Bob, you back? I'm back. I'm back. I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't manage to get any change, so I had to call and collect. Yeah, I, I mean, I would have I would have accepted the charges sooner, but I'm not sure where the charges even go. We're on Zoom. But, you know, we were happy to, uh, to accept this collect call to have Bob back on the show. Yeah, you think you have problems. Bob will be on location uh, as often as we can, uh, probably on his way back to Florida next week. We'll have him stop back at the uh, Provo Hotel uh, that Fletch calls um, calls back into Larry with. Uh, is that Pro? Are they in Provo? Is he? In- They're actually in Ogden, and I'll be honest with you, uh, Laker Jim. Ogden and Florida are not the cure for boredom. <laughs> Jake and I actually started to talk about Fletch Lives, which I'm happy you're back for because I know it's a favorite of yours. Yeah, and you can tell that um, that uh, you know there there are hints of of Gregory McDonald in, and obviously you know. And you can look at an old interview that I did that you referred to, James, on the website because the website is still active. And if you're interested, it's a it's a very antiquated interview, but there's still a lot of good information there. And one of the questions I asked him was, why did they go with the original script? And basically, he said they went back and forth for a while. And then in the end, they decided to do with something original. Um, which is a shame, and I'm glad that we're actually getting Confessed Fletch, which is based on, I think, argu- arguably one of the, the best Fletch sequels. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of funny stuff in there that um, that definitely, you know, exactly. Like, I, I think any of those people that just automatically disregard Fletch Lives, give it another watch, because I think it's been a while, and, and I'm not saying the movie aged all that well, but... I feel like too often they disregard the sequel as that ah, sucked. It wasn't as good as the first movie. And it, maybe it wasn't as good as the first movie, but it's pretty damn funny. It's pretty good. And it's good. It's good Fletch. I mean, there's a lot of good Fletch in there. Betty, how about lunch at the In-N-Out Burger? I'm not hungry. All right, forget the burger. How about just the In-N-Out? Ugh. Very well. How about just the In? <laughs> well, I think that the, the, the true spirit of Fletch <laughs> isn't just Chevy playing Fletch, but it's the, it's the characters that surround Fletch. And I, I, for one, love Fletch Lives. I don't think you lose anything with Fletch Lives. I've always felt like it's right there with the original. Whenever I watch Fletch, I have to jump right into Fletch Lives afterwards. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm different. Maybe I'm different than the average Fletch fan, but, but Fletch to me is a four-hour movie. And, and I go right into Fletch Lives. And honestly, I, I, I don't understand, but I know it's not based on a book. And, and listen, folks, it, the one thing about this this podcast you'll find, Jake is Jake won't admit this, but Jake is the book. Uh, James, what would you say, book Jesus when it comes to Fletch? Is that <laughs> praise the Lord? Bless you, bless you, bless her, bless him. Hallelujah. Is that a fair way to assess? He, this guy knows everything about the books. Uh, he knows more than us. So he, he definitely knows more. Than, well, I never I've never read books, so he definitely knows more than us. I am going to start doing the books on tape like James because I am lazy. Exactly, exactly. Because the Fletch universe is more than just the movies. It's the books. It's it's the script. It's the new Fletch that's coming out. It's Fletch1.tripod.net. It's the fans. It's the people that keep it alive. Because really, it is, if nothing else, Fletch is a cult film. It's a hugely successful cult film, but it is a cult film. And the Fletch fans are, are some of the best fans. All right, let's get into some news. The Jane Doe Report. I'm turning the story over to a professional reporter. (laughs) 
Boys, we got real Fletch news to report. Jason, to kick us off, new news from the world of Fletch. Yeah, so as we, we've been talking, we've been anticipating this, and there was news months ago that we were actually going to get a new Fletch movie. Yeah, the Hollywood Reporter actually did an interview with John Hamm um, early on, and let's listen to his explanation of uh, what this movie is going to attempt. Well, hopefully we'll be shooting in, in New York uh, in May. Uh, it's uh, it's not so much a remake as it is kind of a, a rebooting of the whole series. There were 11 novels that Gregory McDonald wrote back in the 70s and 80s uh, that, that featured the character I Am Fletcher that we all uh, love and that Chevy portrayed so well. And, and I think we're going to try to take it back a little, uh, you know, bring some of that same uh, humor to it, obviously, because you can't get away from that. Uh, but let Chevy's version be Chevy's version and, and hopefully put our own stamp on it. And, and if it succeeds and people, people like it, um, then we got a few more books to hopefully adapt. And, and if not, well, on to the next one. But uh, I think people are going to be excited. When Ham was introduced, I was I was pleased. Uh, I've seen you know Ham from you know Mad Men from his little stint on Curb Your Enthusiasm, which I thought he was great in that. So if you've seen Ham, you know that he's got potential. If you read the books, you know that Ham uh, looks like an older Fletch. Fletch is known to be very good looking. You know he's a good shape. So Ham definitely has the bones for fletch from the uh the waist up i imagine actually from the waist down too from what i hear and i remember uh jim and i were talking we we're like well you know we, we we're hoping we liked him we thought he was going to be a good fletch but until cameras are rolling there was always that trepidation that hesitation that we weren't because we've been once bitten twice shy we knew we knew we knew we've seen this a million times with different casting with all the way back from, you know, to Jason Lee, Zach Braff, Jason Sudeikis. I'm sure we probably missed a few along the way that at one time or another was rumored to be the new Fletch. And when, when John Hamm first made the announcement, he, um, now the book takes, takes place in Boston. Yeah. He said that they were moving, they were going to move the story to New York and, and shoot it in New York. Now that did not happen. They actually must have changed their mind at some point, and we can maybe when we when we have the director on the podcast, we can um, ask him what happened there. But no, they moved it to Boston, which is great. Yeah, it's great that the uh, the movie's going to have the same background as the book. Yeah, and that's where Gregory McDonald was living for, you know, for years and years, and that's where he set the book. And so then Greg Matola, out of nowhere. And Jim, and Jim, I think you sent me this. He either tweeted it out or he put it on his Instagram page that he was a couple weeks from shooting. And there was actually a picture of the script. So we couldn't believe it. I think it's the caption was two and a half weeks out. Right. And we were just elated that it looked like it was actually going to come to fruition. And now, and I believe they started shooting the last week of June and you can Google it. We've seen various, you know, Jim and I have been back and forth with production photos and trying to detect and try to figure out, wow, was this part of the book? Is this going to be something that's new? But now, uh, Greg Matolo just put on his Instagram page yesterday, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier, that production has finished, that they shot for about seven weeks or so in and around Boston and, and in Massachusetts. And if you've read Confess Fletch, the book, you know that Fletch at the time is living in Italy and they actually finished the production uh, just a few days ago with some shooting in Italy or around Rome, yeah. I believe. So that's very encouraging because obviously they are looking at source material and you would assume that Fletch is in Italy at some time in the novel or in the movie, like he was in the yeah, novel. Yeah, it's going to be interesting how they update the story to be in modern times. You know, obviously the book was written. I imagine the book was the book written in the 70s. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the book was written in the 70s, probably set in the 70s. Mm -hmm. So they're going to update it. They're going to update it to 2020. 
2021, but I mean, they're going to update it to today's times. And it's going to be interesting what changes changes are made. Yeah, Confess Flesh came out in 76. Um, and Gregory McDonald said that the way the original book ends, he never would have ended that book the way where Fletch was if to, 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 uh, to do Confess Fletch, but because it was such a huge hit, uh, he never really anticipated writing a sequel to it. Um, but because of that, again, he, he said if he knew he was going to write more, he would never end Fletch where he was at the end of the book. Long story short, though, um, I think I think it's great that they shot in Boston. I think they, it's great that they, they shot in Italy. So I'm really um, hopeful and anticipating that there will be some, it will hopefully resemble the novel, like I, I think in many ways the original did. We got to hope this is a success because if this takes off, we can see the other, the, we can see more movies. I mean, this, yes, that's what we're all hoping. Yeah, for. <laughs> this is this is how it should have should have gone in the in the beginning with with the first Fletch. I mean, it was such a big hit. It was such a money maker for the studio. They should have just kept going with the books, and I and I think they would have been fine. And I think Chevy had his hand in that a little bit, and I think his reputation of, of being somebody that's hard to work with, um, both on the set and um, you know for for different production companies. Uh, where they just decided they weren't in the business to do Chevy movies anymore. That obviously hurt Fletch as far as the series goes. But I mean, I think this is our second chance. And I think this can be, we can see Fletch in a whole new light and we can see him with new stories and, and we can continue this Fletch universe, you know, that we all love. A lot of the discussion is that this new movie will kind of mirror the books a little bit more, at least from what I have read, because if you've read any of the Fletch books, they're very heavy on dialogue, pages and pages of dialogue. And I, I think that that's the version they're looking at. Obviously, we will have some hesitation on some of the original movie fans that we're not going to see the maybe more, uh, you know, identities and slapstick that maybe was definitely present in the original movies. But we'll see. And I, yeah, and I and I think John Hamm knows he can't be Chevy Chase. I mean, he knows he can't do the Chevy Chase version of Fletch. I think he'll be witty. I think he'll be funny. Um, right, but the slapstick won't be there. That that Chevy brought to the character. And John Hamm has come out and said that. What we're really trying to do with the reboot is is get to a, a, a much more of a, a place where the novels were, which is he's he's charming and irreverent, but he's also He's less that goofy kind of pratfally fall down, get your head stuck in a light fixture kind of guy, and more yeah. of a more more intellectual in his approach. And that's not too surprising because anyone who has attempted to reboot Fletch from Kevin Smith all the way down, they have, they were going to take this approach. Bill Simmons did. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with his his podcast, Rewatchables, but there's a Fletch Rewatchables out there, and I encourage everybody to listen to it. It's a great episode. I really enjoyed it. John Hamm is never short on on, on on quality comedy. I mean, I don't know how much either of you or anyone listening to this has followed John Hamm's career. I've been a fan of John Hamm since the movie called The Town. I don't know if either one of you seen that. It's actually, ironically, a Ben Affleck movie. Uh, he's not playing a comedy character in that role, but he does manage to bring the dialogue to a, a great level in that movie where he can kind of banter back and forth with people. And, and that's the movie that, as I'm looking through his IMDb and I'm looking through it, and I'm thinking to myself, all the movies, two things stand out. One is his role in the town where he actually plays a, an undercover FBI agent. And the second one is his role in uh, the Netflix TV show Black Mirror, where he's in an episode 2014 called White Christmas, where he is really, really bantering back and forth with somebody in a, uh, a winter uh, cottage. And it's just the two of them going back and forth telling a story. This guy, I have no doubt, is going to be able to bring his own version, not the Chevy version. He's come out and said ahead of time that he's not going to be bringing the, you know, a, a clone of Chevy Chase. He knows he can't do that. So no one should have that expectation for him. What you do need to look at when it comes to John Hamm is his ability to speak. And he is a great 
speaker, and he is a very good actor. So me personally, would he have been my first choice? Probably not, uh, based on some of the other names that have been thrown around, Ryan Reynolds, Jason Lee, so on and so forth. But I do believe this guy is not a bad choice by any stretch. And I think they'll, they understand that they have to somewhat pay homage to the original movies for Fletch fans to cling to. Like, I think what Cobra Kai, you know, why Cobra Kai is such a huge success is because they just did it right. You know, they, they did everything that the fans of Karate Kid would want to see. And, and I just hope that although you can't, bring back every character and every joke and what I do think there will be callbacks to the movie. I think there'll be callbacks to the Chevy Chase version of Fletch. And, and I think it'll, I hope it'll be enough for Fletch fans to, you know, grasp onto and accept this version of Fletch because we, we want it to be successful. We, we love the Chevy version. We're not, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're with you. No, nobody will ever, ever outdo Chevy's version of Fletch, but I think we do need to support this version of Fletch so that we get more and more Fletch and fans of the books and fans of, of the character of Fletch, not just Chevy Chase, um, have something something to look forward to and something for the future. And if you, if you look at the pictures from, from the production in Massachusetts, um, nowhere in the books is has it ever been mentioned that Fletch is a Lakers fan, but yet in some of the production photos that you've seen, John Hamm is wearing during production a Lakers hat. So that is obviously a throwback to the movies and not the books. And also, let's let's not let's not put this all on John Hamm. Really, the person who's going to be able to create the version of Fletch that we love is really going to be the director and the writers. You know, Greg Matola and, and Zev Barrow, is it? I think I'm saying that right. Those are the guys who really have got to direct John Hamm the correct way to, again, not to be a Chevy Chase clone, but to definitely have that, that witty snap banter that Fletch needs to have so desperately in order to be Fletch. They need to direct him and they need to make sure that's, that's really on them more than John Hamm. Yeah, and I, and I think I think we all owe John Hamm because I think he was sort of the catalyst in making this happen. You know, it wasn't that they just plucked him out of the, you know, the sea of actors that they could they could they could choose. I think this franchise landed in John Hamm's lap, so to speak, and he said, "Yeah, I want to do this." And he and he and his little production crew, because I think I think John Hamm is a producer of on on the movie as well and i'm sure he had a hand he's going to have a hand in the writing of it and the rewrites of it or the on set you know changes that they make because he's a he's a big fletch fan and i think the person that plays fletch needed to be a fletch fan and he is and he's a fan of the books fan of the movies loves chevy chase and I, you know, I don't know what more we can ask for of the type of person to play Fletch because I think he's perfect in that in that respect. And you know, the more the more we look at pictures of him, and I don't know if you saw the most recent pictures of him in Rome, he's kind of got like Chevy hair in that. He kind of has the parted Chevy hair, and it kind of looks a little longer and a little, you know, uh, you know, straggly on the side, like like Chevy wore it. So maybe you know, maybe the more we look at him, he'll start to become, you know, the character in our mind that we, when we close our eyes, we picture, we picture as Fletch. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited for it. And like you said, he's got the chops, he's got the experience. Um, he knows what funny is. And I think that there'll be a, a nice balance between maybe the book and as well, the funnier things in, that right. we see in in the movie. So I'm really excited for it. I think it's going to be great. And also, John, John Hamm carries the same kind of body uh, that Chevy Chase. He's tall. He's, he's, he's filled out. You know, so, you know, just visually looking at John Hamm, if you're talking about the hair, you know, also his body, his, his rugged good looks, that's all very Chevy. I think he's even got a, like a chin dimple <laughs> if you really need to have you know, the, the, the thought of Chevy bouncing in your head and you want to compare, it's, it's not that bad of a casting. And 
you know, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely keeping an open mind and I'm definitely looking forward to it. And the other thing I wanted to mention before I get off of the director, I mean, this guy has, has directed some, some, or he's been involved in, I don't know if he's been the director or just been involved in some really good recent movies, you know, super bad, uh, just a hilarious movie. Adventureland. I don't know if everybody has seen Adventureland. It was a, I think his name is Jesse Eisenberg movie, but a really good, uh, 80s kind of coming of age teenage comedy uh very good uh clear history which john han was you know if you want a, an example of those two guys working together clear history which is the larry david hbo tv movie hilarious movie that i love so much this guy was uh was the guy behind clear history so i'm pretty confident i see also that he's involved in some sort of a goonies movie uh project but i'm pretty confident that this guy uh is going to be in the right guy I always thought that Fletch would be the perfect Netflix series. I said the same thing. I said the same thing. You know, the, with the way with the way Netflix has gone with the shows, it, it, it's just made for a you know each book being a being a season. You know, basically of you know a Netflix series. I would love to see it go that way. I don't. You know, maybe let's say uh, hopefully they remain with the films, but you know maybe. It, somewhere down the line it spins off that way as well well they plan to do that with the jack reacher series if you guys are familiar with that i just i just became familiar with that i know that amazon prime is going to be doing that yeah so they're going to be doing a book a season yeah we're really hoping we're really hoping for a fletch universe to pop out of this that that that's our main that really is though can you said that's our main hope if you're a true diehard fletch fan that's what you need and like you said, the expanded universe, because we know that Flynn is a huge character in Confess Fletch, and he actually will not be in the movie, because I think there's hope that that could be something that we see down the road separate, um, a Flynn movie, a Flynn series. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I mean, he's such a big part of the book, and um, it would have been the perfect opportunity to to introduce him to be spun off and again maybe that's something that we'll be able to ask um yeah. you know in the future episode yeah we all exactly we all have to support we all have to support this movie whether you're you're you know you're against it or not you're you, whether you think you can never look at anyone else except chevy uh in the role we all have to support this movie because if this is successful we're going to get more fletch down the road so up next is a segment where we're going to do where we're going to take a Fletch character, either from the books or the movies or both, and we're really going to break down the character. Everything we know about him, we're going to let you know. We're going to dig into his files. And of course, where are all the most important files kept? The records room. Up next. Hey, Dr. Rosen. Dr. Rosen. Dr. Rosenstein to oncology. The records room. This week's Fletchcast character spotlight is Fat Sam. Dr. Rosenbaum to neurology. B1, access granted. Welcome, Dr. Rosen. Well, Fat Sam was played by George Wendt. Where? Who was already known for his role of Norm on Cheers. And although he wasn't a household name, he certainly was a household face, and his character was yeah. a household name. Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, Norm! Norman? How's life, Norm? Not for the squeamish, coach. <laughs> he was in his third season of Cheers, so he was a, you know, he was a, he was a pretty good guest star of the movie to have in there. Without a doubt, a very good get. Again, you, you, you definitely a household name because of Cheers, without a doubt. But at the same time, he, he's the guy's done over a hundred. If you go to IMDb, he's done over. 100. People know who he is. So, Fat Sam is dealing drugs on the beach. That's what the, really the whole movie. The whole movie really revolves around Fletch's initial investigation in drug trafficking, right, on the beach. Do you know the source? Practically. Yeah. Well, what's practically? Is it this guy, Fat Sam? He said you had pictures of him. I do have pictures of him dealing. So Fat Sam, in the book, we actually get Fat Sam's age. Fat Sam is 38 years old. Yes, yes. Do you guys think he was that old? Well, I think in the 80s, people were much older than they... I'm sorry, people appeared much older than they actually were. There's a weird 
thing going on in the 80s where gray haired men were balding. And then you'd find out they were like 32 and you'd be like, oh, he's so old. <laughs> you know, I think, I, think it's a, I think it's the fact that all of us are in our 40s. And now a 38 year old fat Sam seems too young. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> right. Well, Creasy, if you remember, Creasy's only 19 in the movie as far as his character. Goes. That's true. That's true. Yeah. George Went was 36 years old when he played Fat Sam. So he played, it was age, he was cast appropriately age wise. But man, 36, that seems young. Again, looking much older than you actually are. People take better care of themselves nowadays. All right, let's talk a little about Fat Sam's look. Okay. Between the book, the movie, and the script, he's described a little bit differently. So I'll I'll uh, I'll go into some of the um, the ways he's described. In the book, Fat Sam's balding, balding, bearded, with kind eyes, mm -hmm. and desperately skinny. Yeah, desperately skinny. So more of a more of a more of an addict who's starving, uh, and and lives off of a strong diet of reds every day. <laughs> you know, it's funny you bring up reds. It, it, did you know? Do you know what reds are? I got some reds. You don't mean communist, do you, Sam? <laughs> Everything a joke to you, Glitch. Everything, Sam. Reds Reds are sleeping pills. Oh, I didn't know that. I never knew. I thought it was the Columbia I National really Holiday. Thought, <laughs> I didn't know. This is going to sound crazy. I thought... <laughs> I thought it. I thought it. It were candy. I thought reds were candy. Uh, now knowing more than I did as a, than I did as a kid, I would I would probably equate it to something <laughs> along the lines of like a looks like heroin gene. But but yeah, if it's if it's a sleeping if it's a sleeping pill, that that kind of does make sense given that given that Creasy is pretty much out cold while he's talking to Fletch. Now we know what he looks like in the movie. You know, he's got the beret. He's got the long sleeve sure. shirt that's open with the t shirt and the pants. No socks. Slovenly unkempt, yeah, yeah, beach bum, but but also heavy set beach bum, not steep. right. The script describes him actually mentions what kind of clothes he should be wearing a stained velour sweatsuit. Ironically, that's what I'm wearing right now. <laughs> well, thank goodness it's audio and not video, right? <laughs> that Sam's real name is also revealed in the book. Really, what is it? Real name is Charles Witherspoon. Yes. And Charles Witherspoon, I believe, now let me think, because it's been a little while. Um, was he from Colorado or I can't remember. And he was actually a former music teacher, I believe the book said. So Fat Sam had real dreams. <laughs> right. Just go show you kids not to <laughs> get yourself involved in, uh, in Reds. Yeah. Man had real dreams. He probably had a passion for music and now he's slinging burgers on the beach in California. He also had a he also had another alias in the book that it, it kind of like threw me off a little bit that he was sort of known as Vatsiana or yeah, it was something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is it? What like is it? Vats, one more time? Vatsiana or or something like that. V a t s y a y a n a. That's correct. Well, I, I'm looking up a the the, the term on Google, Wikipedia, and it immediately points me towards the Kama Sutra. Yes, yes that was the, he was the author of the Kama Sutra. And um, I think they use that alias as sort of like, um, almost like a, a persona mm -hmm. of Fat Sam that you don't want to mess with. Maybe as far as like hmm. not sniffing him for money or, or screwing him in any way. Um, it, it was a little more intimidating of a name than Fat Sam and, and certainly more intimidating than Charles Witherspoon. You know, one of the points is that he never leaves the beach. He never leaves. Fletch in the book watches him for 36 straight hours and he never leaves. So you wonder like, where, where does he sleep? Does he sleep just under one of those little broken fences that lean up against his shack? Or does he sleep in the shack? Does he sleep, does he sleep in the chair? Does he sleep at all? And how, the guy, how does he shower? That's the bigger question is. <laughs> the book does, the book does say that he stunk. Like the, the way he does. Yes, I remember that. Yep, absolutely. That's why. Because, yeah, he was not, he wasn't pleasant. A little George Went fun fact. He is the uncle of Jason Sudeikis. Wow. Yeah, you know, I, 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 it's funny. I just saw that, at, you know, at one time. And then Sudeikis at one time was going to be Fletch a, a few years ago. Yeah, that would have been, a, that would yeah, been an awesome yeah, coincidence. At one yeah. time. Yeah, George Went's sister's son is Jason Stakus. He was cast as Fletch. That that production company went out of business. I think they went under. And that was pretty much the last we heard about Fletch One 
or a flesh production until the current one uh which was it like i really thought that was the end i really i really really thought that was the end yeah i thought that was gonna work yeah i'm assuming that's after fletch one jason lee oh yeah yeah this was like this is like 2017 maybe yeah Yeah. yep yeah that was right oh so this is way more way recent yeah yeah and that's unfortunate because i think he would have been a great fletch um and again and and the discussions was still around fletch one uh would have been the younger fletch you know right out of the marines and yeah he was the perfect age for it but um yeah, again, just another disappointment when it comes to a Fletch fan where the uh, the production fell through. And I have such an intense case of Fletch PTSD. I know it's happening. I don't believe it. I don't want to be fooled one more time. <laughs> I just don't. I just don't. Back to Fat Sam. I read Fletch, and obviously I had seen the movie. But yeah, it was just interesting. But obviously you take liberties when a book is transferred to film but i think they did a great job with casting and i thought he was great in it and um so i mean i was really happy with with how going back and reading the book and then you know looking at the movie again um, just how i thought they did a great job with it and, and with the characters including fat sam part of the casting of fletch is uh you know a role like that you want to get uh, somebody well not not necessarily the fat Sam role, but you have to have you have to beef up the the overall cast with some with some some home run hitters, and I think that he's one of the people in the movie that really is recognizable, like you said earlier. So he does add such a dynamic to the movie because if if you would have casted somebody who was a lesser known person, I think the character would have been less memorable. Right, and I'm sure you guys probably have to agree. With sure, that. absolutely. Let's talk about Fat Sam's business. Okay, aside from being a drug dealer. He's got the hamburger shack. Business is really picked up, huh? Still closed. I watched this thing a thousand times to see what is Fat Sam selling besides <laughs> drugs. So his chalkboard mem- menu up? doesn't have a chalkboard menu. I wish he did. It would have saved me a lot of time. <laughs> so here's what he sells. He sells cheeseburgers. He sells chili burgers. He sells taquitos, burritos, and super tacos. I wonder what a... That Sam super taco is, or what that costs. What's interesting by. though is, so he never leaves the beach, but apparently, um, you know, obviously we f- we figure out how he's getting the drugs, but how's he getting his supplies for his hamburger shack? Good question. Another thing, he sells <laughs> cold beer. Right. How the hell is he selling cold beer on the beach? Does he have a liquor <laughs> yeah, license? That's great. Well, when you're when you're when you're involved with the police and the levels he is, I think that the liquor license is less of a concern than <laughs> that's the. Right, uh, that's a good point. <laughs> but no, that's that's the kind of question. They, they, that's the kind of question I love because it really that's the kind of question that only a true Fletch fan would ask. <laughs> they can over. Well, hey, if you're selling drugs for the chief, they'll overlook the fact that you don't have a liquor license. <laughs> How much money could he be making on the hamburger side? He couldn't have more signs deterring people from coming to him. He's got do not trespass signs. He's got no trespassing signs. He's got police signs. In all fairness, Laker Jim, he, he isn't getting any of the action. He's just getting free junk. So he does have to survive somehow. <laughs> now all I get out of this is free junk. You don't have a piece of the action? No, free junk. That's it. <laughs> that's right. He, he needs to support himself. He Man does need to junk. pay the rent. That's that it. Is- Man needs <laughs> man needs to pay the rent on his little burger. Does anybody have any idea what he is meddling with in that yeah. napkin? When growing up, I thought there were like yeah, nuts yeah. or something, <laughs> pistachios. I think it's a hot dog. What the hell is he picking off the hot dog? At one point, he's picking at it, and he's it's a little hot dog in a roll in a in a napkin. When he's eating on the beach. He might have sand in his hot dog. You want to hear something funny, Bob? You mentioned uh, free junk in the script. He says. Uh, Fletch says, you don't have a piece of the action. He says, no, just free snort. I said, that's it, free snort. How different How different would that line have been if it was free snort instead well, of free junk? I, I think I think free yeah. junk is the way to go, especially since he's dealing in red pills, I believe. How do you snort an entire... <laughs> well, I don't want to get into all that, but <laughs> I think free junk is the way Although, to go. if, you know, it might be easier if he just had snort because uh, for gummy, because then gummy could probably, you know, get a lot more down back down to the uh, to the shanty. When when uh, when Fat Sam and Gummy 
uh, turn state's evidence, and uh, Fletch brings him into the newspaper for protection. Gummy, is, Gummy, of course, is stealing stuff from Frank's office. Fat Sam is making a phone call. Right, that's so great. Who could Fat Sam be calling? That's right. I think it's more he's just he's bragging that somebody has him somewhere. He hasn't left the beach. He's got somebody's Ooh. phone number that he had to call. Maybe he's maybe he's calling his uh, his food chain supplier <laughs> that's for, right. uh, for the, <laughs> that's for right. the chef. canceling his delivery for the next day. <laughs> you know what I'm so you know what funny. I'm wondering? I'm wondering I'm wondering about I'm wondering about the reputation of the food. <laughs> right, for Fat Sam's. Yeah, what that's do you think true. The uh, the Yelp review would have been on a place like Fat Sam's. Come for the burgers, stay for the yeah, junk. Yeah, really. I mean, is that is that what we're working with here? Warm beer, cold uh, hamburgers, and free junk. <laughs> you think about it too. Like in 1985, there's no bigger slap in the face than making a long distance call. Oh so yeah, that's a oh good yeah, time. yeah. And uh, you know, you know, that's what Frank was nervous Poor about. Frank. He must be calling long distance. Yeah. Yeah, Frank is definitely uh, watching every line item. So if he sees a, a ninety dollar phone call somewhere he's he's not having that so yeah that that is a big 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 no-no for somebody like frank i think with fletch i think fat sam just looks at him in a different way he's not exactly like them all i mean i love that fat sam laugh what is it the columbia national holiday yeah, yeah, but... you know fletch must make him laugh all the time because he's got that deep gurgling like you know fat sam laugh that uh you know, when when uh, when Fletch delivers a couple funny lines, it makes him really crack up. And uh, in the script, um, he actually gives Fletch a little more information. So what do you figure, Sam? No idea. No idea at all? Some idea. Like when? When it comes, it comes. When Fats, when uh, Fletch is kind of asking Fat Sam, uh, you know, do you have any idea when the, when the stuff might be coming? He says... Uh, he says, some idea. And he says, like, when? He says, like, tonight. And uh, he says, you're going to want some shit. And Fletch says, I'd rather have drugs. So that little that little joke from the script uh, did not make it into the movie. And I wonder how much... I wonder how... I, obviously, Chevy's part was um, improvised uh, quite a bit. I wonder if, if that was just... Uh, a line that was omitted or cut or they did shoot and they it didn't make the uh, the final version um because a lot of fat sam's lines except for that are pretty 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 true to the movie what's also interesting that you uh that you in the book is that in the at the end when when you know he's getting depositions from gummy from fat sam uh, you know for the story actually you know he's going to he's down at the uh at the um, shanty or whatever, uh, talking to Fat Sam, and he starts trying to type. And Fat Sam actually takes over in in the book and write and types out his own deposition. Right. And Fletch is like, "Wow!" But yeah, you can see throughout and and towards the end there um, of the book, you can you know d you can definitely, as you said, uh, see that Fletch sympathizes with him because he's like you mentioned, he's an older guy. At one time, he had a life. He was somewhat successful, and he's lost it all to drugs. I'm a slave, that son of a bitch. He busted me, third offense. Give me my choice. Push for him or do 15 long. And so there's that. So being a movie, being a side character, you don't get a much of a background like you would in the book. So again, if you appreciate the movie, uh, you should definitely check out the book. Um, because there's just there's just so much more richness and it's obviously so much more of a backstory to some of these characters that in the movie we only really see in a few scenes but in the book there's so much more uh, I will speak for anyone that has watched the movie first and read the book second like I have there's some surprises in the book it doesn't end the way you think it's going right. to end yeah that's what I was going to ask too you know you made mention about uh, Fat Sam's appreciation for Fletch. Now, when you think about this, think about it logically. If you're Fat Sam and you're living on that beach, who would you rather have a daily interaction with? Somebody like Fletch who's going to be fun to talk to or somebody like Creasy who's going to just keep coming up to you every five minutes yeah. asking you when the stuff is there? Fletch? Man. <laughs> you don't know me, Sam. It's my pleasure, brother. <laughs> that, and let me ask this, Jake. I want, this is to you. In the book, does Fat Sam have any 
interactions that don't make it into the movie. You know, there's there's other characters that are in the book that aren't in the movie um, that we know of that um, obviously Bobby is a big character in the book that didn't make it into the movie, probably for obvious reasons. And if you read the book, right. uh, you'll know why. But I didn't read the book, so I'm curious. Or should or should we or should we should we should we maybe have a Bobby episode down the road? <laughs> well, I don't know, James. Should we talk about it, or we should should we say, "Hey, you should read the book." <laughs> uh, she's a 15 year old prostitute. Oh, it's a she. Okay. Yeah that 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 Fletch has a friendship and a, and a and a sexual relationship with. So, kind of seeing why it was cut out of the movie. Starting to see why it was cut. <laughs> if you read the book you have a lot of sympathy for the Bobby character. And I think that helps motivate Fletch to get this story and, you know, to find out who's behind the drugs all along. Um, so there's that angle of it too. Interesting. What happens to Bobby leads to Gummy and Fat Sam turning state's evidence. I think it's really like, I mean, I, I, I you know, obviously a 15 year old, drug addicted prostitute i think you you can figure out where where this character ends but i think when they realize that she od'd that's when they're like well okay this is this has to stop we and we if we can help stop it we're gonna do it and i think that's she plays a big role in the in the end of gummy and and sam sort of like turning oh sure yeah I'm gonna bust the chief Kind of bust the chief. Yeah, I mean, they could have added the character. I, I, um, and and just made her a little older. Speaking of which, do we do we know this is a, a tangent a bit, but do we know how old Fletch is in the movies? Well, I would imagine that, and he's still in his late twenties okay. during uh, during the original. Because if you, you know, McDonald wrote the books out of order. Fletch one was came after the original Fletch and in Fletch one he had was still very new at the newspaper he had just started at the newspaper and he was just out of the marines so I would I would and I'm actually going back and I'm actually listening now because James you got me into uh the audiobooks so now I'm listening uh, uh, Jake Jake uh Jake just to interrupt because you could, we never call him James again and make sure we refer to James only as Laker Jim <laughs> let me just explain the laker jim thing too because if you know anyone named james or jimmy or jim or jimbo they're one of those names and there's they're not anything else i'm always i've always been a james since i was when I, since i was young and anyone that called me jim or jimmy or jimbo yeah i hated i wasn't that you know james's are james's jim's are jim's jim jimmy's are jimmy's <laughs> and, and so on and you know at the time you look like a james i do look like a james right <laughs> you look yes, like a james right? so at the time aol instant messenger um i think i i don't know why but laker jim was my aol instant messenger name and that was how i wanted people to be able to contact me off the website because so you did it you did it to yourself you did this to I yourself did it to myself I don I donned the moniker of Laker Jim, and I've uh, it's haunted me ever since. The hay is better than Irwin. Last thing I want to mention, I always thought that Fat Sam's Hamburger Shop. I always thought it was on the beach. It's not on the beach. It's practically, it's practically under a pier, isn't it? It's on. It's it's actually on the road. Get out it's, of here. It's actually right. Like yeah, it's it's between the road and the beach. I gotta look at that again. I bo I always pictured it. Being like dead center in the middle of the sand, surrounded by sand. It's not. It's on the side. I have of the a road. question for you. So, in this ballad of, of Fat Sam, you know, is this it, it, the Fletch movie and the Fletch book itself? Is this the the first and last time we ever see Fat Sam in just this story, or does he reoccur somewhere? We we don't see Fat Sam again. Yeah, one and done with him. Okay. Now, so his. His little phone call in, in, in Frank's office. This is <laughs> right. so, yeah. He's in witness protection. Right. And, and he, exactly. Yeah. He's probably a fry cook somewhere in Arizona, maybe. <laughs> but in future novels, there are references to other characters that were the, in the original Fletch novel. I believe Ooh. the website still has a list of characters. 
under the book section, if I'm not mistaken, that kind of shows where the, those characters show up again. Because, you know, he has uh, his friend, his old editor, Jack, who's in Confess Fletch. Um, you know, obviously, Frank makes a few appearances. Uh, Alston Chambers, the uh, the you know right. the attorney that's a good friend of his, who becomes you know one of the district attorneys of L.A. So there's definitely a number of characters that reappear. But as far as Fat Sam, no. You see, Fletch fans, you know, Laker Jim and I, you know, we've been Fletch fans our entire lives. We needed to go out and find ourselves, Jake, for this podcast. We need to find ourselves that authority on the Fletch books that just is just a wealth of knowledge that knows everything there is to know about the Fletch book universe. We're damn lucky. We're damn lucky to have. We're damn lucky to have Jake on this podcast. I agree. Jake is going to be a huge part of this podcast. But I so anyway, I think that I think that sums up uh, our investigation into Fat Sam, and I think we can close uh, close the file on him, put him back into the uh, filing cabinet, and we can uh, we can exit uh, the records room until next week. Yeah, you know, we'll figure out what character we're doing next week, and then we'll be back. B one. So that about wraps it up for episode one. I'd like to thank my co-hosts, Bob and Jake. It's been great. I mean, I can't believe it's been an hour and a half already, and I can keep going. You guys did amazing. Thanks to the fans who have followed us this long and supported us. If you enjoyed the podcast, please do us a favor. Follow, subscribe, rate, and review uh, all the things that help podcasts grow. We'd appreciate it if you spread the word to other Fletch fans uh, to give us a listen. We have a Fletch hotline. So any fans that want to call in, leave a comment, ask a question. The number is 267-714-6799. Call 24-7. The line's always open, always available for voicemails. And we may listen to your voicemail on a future podcast. All right. So we'll see you guys next week. If you don't mind, I'm going to run. I try to catch the last 10 minutes of Dynasty. See you.